In this video, we're going to look at how you can configure the Risk Register application. That's Risk Register by Project Balm. Um, we start out, this obviously assumes that you have administration privileges on your system. We go to the uh, gear icon, which is the settings menu. We click on apps. And then in just a few moments, you'll see the administration menu comes up. We see here the apps menu off on to the left and down here we have the risk register app and there are four settings underneath it. We'll go through each of these one by one. If we look at the getting started item, this is what pops up when you initially install risk register and it just really uh, tells you what you need to do to get going with the risk register. So you need to adjust the add-on settings, you need to adjust the risk model. Uh, and so on, and, and we're going to have a look at that now. We'll click on settings. These are some of the main settings that you can configure for Risk Register. It's fairly simple, which is which is the application is simple to use. Uh, we've got the risk issue types up here. We've got the risk treatment here, and also the risk matrix appearance. So here you can define the primary and supplementary risk type. Uh, the primary risk type, the issues of the primary risk type are automatically included in risk registers. So very often you will create a issue type called risk and you'll want that to always appear. If you've got an issue type called risk, you'll always want that to appear uh, in your risk registers. And so you can define that here, but you could, you may not want to use risk, you might want to use other ones as well. Um, here we have the supplementary risk types. So sometimes you not only want to have risks, uh, say issue type risk appear in your risk register, you might decide that, hey, I want to add some risk information to tasks, for example. So whenever there's risk information on a task, I want that to appear as well. And that way you use supplementary risk type to do that. So you might say, I want um, tasks to be the uh, supplementary risk types. And that's how you do that here. You can actually do this negatively as well. You could say all except. You could say, I want every issue type in JIRA to be a supplementary risk type except for task. So in that instance, task is the only one that will not appear in your risk registers. Uh, but we'll leave that set as only task. That's a common one here. We'll move on down to risk treatment. So it's fairly common for organizations to define treatment plans for their risks. And what this enables you to do is to define those plans, but put them in a different uh, issue. And then you can link them together. So here we've said uh, there's a treatment link type. So you might have a risk, we'll just call it risk one. You might have a treatment plan in a task, we might call that um, task one. You would use this treatment link type to link those two together. You go to the regular JIRA linking, you'd say, hey, I want, um, I want task one to treat uh, risk one. And then you just link them together using this link type. The cool thing that gives you then, and we'll have a look at this in another video, is on your uh, risk register screen, the main risk view, those uh, treatment plans that you've then linked to your risk, they'll all appear underneath your risk. So that's what we use this risk treatment field for. And then we've got risk matrix appearance. This is very simple. You've got, um, are we going to show the empty cells? Are they going to be gray or are they going to be colored in? You can just select your buttons here. There's also the orientation, there's probability or impact going to be along the top and you can flip that just by clicking this button. Very simple. We'll go down here to the risk model. This is the engine of risk register for Project Balm. Here is where you define what your risk uh, model looks like. So it's defined as a matrix and a heat map, uh, risk register takes the probability that you've given your risk, it takes the impact you've given your risk, and then it does a cross match to determine what the level of risk is, but you can define this entirely. So you can see we've got a five by five grid here, and you can see we've got, um, for example, if the risk is likely, 
and the impact is severe, that becomes high. Uh, if the risk is unlikely and the impact is severe, that's a medium risk. You can simply, using these drop-down buttons, change the level of risk for these cells. So we might decide, hey, we want that to be high. You just do that, and then the uh, risk for that cell is high. So whenever we have a risk where the impact is severe and the probability is unlikely, that will now be high. I'll just change that back again. Of course, we can define the number of columns and rows that we want. We do that down here. So here we have the risk impacts, and they go from negligible up to severe. However, I might choose to add an impact. You can see that there, it's called Rename Me. That's actually appeared up the top there. If I rename that, what's above severe? I might say, um, we might say that is uh, extreme. We might define extreme as above severe. We'll click OK. And you can see up the top there now that that impact level is called extreme and then we can that's defaulted to uh, across here but we can then uh, change how we want those risk levels to appear and I'll go and delete that now restore it to how it was the 5 by 5 matrix is very common in industry and, and many perhaps most of you will be using that one we can also do the same thing with probability we can add extra probability columns uh, and also the level of risk, low through to extreme. You can see they appear there. That's all completely configurable. You can pretty much define any risk matrix that you like. This should cover just about every option you can come up with. Uh, down, then our final option under Risk Register App, this is just a handy hyperlink called Get Support. You click on that and that opens up our support portal. If you have any issues, then please go here uh, and click on the link that will then open up a support ticket. We'll get onto that promptly. And that is how you can configure Risk Register by Project Palm.